All right, I'm going to start this with a correction to my previous video where I showed a picture of Peter Van Leishout and Joan Van Leishout. That was wrong, completely wrong. <laughs> I really aged Joan, didn't I? Anyway, uh, this is a correct picture of Peter Van Leishout and Joan Van Leishout. I'm not so sure that they're still a couple, but that's what they looked like when they were. <laughs> now I'm going to have a little bit more of a look at the land and try and get over things quickly. It, this is the amended DA application approval that was given originally to Peter Van Leishout, the one that lapsed in June 2014. I'm bringing this up here because of the three lots that were mentioned that it was a six lot development then it was reduced down to three and what is that three well this PDF here that was sent in September 2020 by Richard Moat the realtor tells us what two out of those three blocks are because the the lot number that they're using it, I'd have to go onto the council and do a search and find out which specific one but essentially if we had a look at um, I've done extracts of a lot of the maps out of this planet document that was sent to prospective investors in Nightcap on Minjimbal in September 2020 so these are the land parcels concerned with the larger nightcap on Minjimbal development. The ones marked in orange, I noticed they also called them Bulla Bulla. Uh, that is 3222 Kyogre Road. You can see from the DA application that the addresses that were given approval were 2924 and 2984 Kyogre Road does not include 3222 Kyogre Road. So if you look at all the blue bits and the purple and the green bit here, that's all Peter Van Leishout. Peter Van Leishout with this purple bit joined in co-ownership with uh, Dolph, Co uh, Dolph, Kovac, Dolph Cook and Darko Kovac and he owns this on a separate title in the name of Kemp Cove and when I say he I'm Peter Van Leishout and this little parcel here that is all on this seemingly one title is actually on three separate titles but this area here is where Peter Van Leishout planned to have his village and within that village area is where he planned to build all his houses. So not all over here and scattered everywhere like Nightcap on Minjimbal had in mind, but more well, have in mind, but in this little area here in a very small, tightly knit community. So this is an image of that little area I just showed you where he intended to condense all the housing into. So when he put forward the concept of the village, it included this village concept being constructed on this parcel of land here, in the front here. Now the six lots that were uh, initially allowed and given approval for was reduced down to three with provisions put on the uh, some of the others but the three that were approved would be this one here well sorry no not that one there number four over here number uh, 121 and number four Oh, yeah, number 4, 121, and 1. So essentially, those three lots covered sort of this area here. Now, that's all the development application was for. 
and it was it's lapsed. This has been confirmed by the council that it lapsed because nothing was done and there was no extension request put in. Now here is a, another image of that same village concept on the planet document that was finalised 2019 and is sent out in 2020 to prospective investors. Now, as you can see over here, this is signed and stamped with the DA that is the one that applies to Peter Van Leishout and those smaller particle, uh, pockets of land. But this is actually on the Nightcap on Minjimbal's project development planet document, this one that's 62 pages long. Now just let me show you a little bit further up here what it says about this. So this DA 06-1054 concept plan approval for a village and ancillary development date 29th of June 2009. That actually has a heading of existing approvals. That is actually false. Existing approval does not exist for the concept plan of the village on that DA number. That approval lapsed. It is not existing because it is not current. It doesn't exist anymore. It, it became null and void. This one down here, however, is not. But it is absolutely nothing to do with the development in that, well, it was long in place before even Peter Van Leishout wanted to do his village concept. So again, they're piggybacking on, well, this has been approved all that long time ago and now that one, this one, this DA 06 1054, that's also got existing approval. Uh, no, it doesn't. It's lapsed. It doesn't exist anymore. So we're just clearing that up in the inaccuracies. Now I'm just drawing attention here to the date of the draft and the final document for Planet. This PDF is May 2019. I'm drawing your attention to that because in May 2019, Adrian Brennock was bankrupt and I've actually seen the signed consent form that he gave for this to be put out, which you know, I'm not so sure he would actually have the authority to actually produce this document as an employee, maybe as a developer he might, but certainly not as a bankrupt can he authorise these kinds of activities that are part of what he needs to disclose he's a bankrupt because of. You know, these are, this is a document designed to get people to buy into something and he's authorising its production and he is stating that you know what he's putting in there is true and correct. This is a man that is an undischarged bankrupt and is not declaring to people that he is a bankrupt. But anyway, there's another reason why I'm pointing out 2019. Because in 2019, in May, the company of Wollumbin Horizons was already in liquidation for two years. And the company was no longer known as Wollumbin Horizons Proprietary Limited, but Wollumbin Horizons Proprietary Limited in liquidation. Now on this map you can see that they're colour coded. That colour coding relates to this chart here. It tells you who owns the land. So the orange bit that is marked down Buller Buller said that the owner is Wollumbin Horizons Proprietary Limited. Well, that would have to be in 2019 when Wollumbin Horizons is in liquidation for two years. That would be very misleading information to put into a document to prospective investors to not let them know that 
the current owner, when the document was done in 2019, was actually in liquidation. That is not disclosed in this document and it is giving a false and misleading perception of the ability of the owner to maintain ownership because for two years since it was put into liquidation it was never intended that Wollumbin Horizons would continue as the owner. Now this PDF was actually sent to me as a prospective investor in September 2020. In September 2020 Wollumbin Horizons had already or the land 3222 had already been sold at auction in June and in November it was going to be settled on. But the new owners in June 2020 were NCV Enterprises. Yet in September 2020 they are still telling people that Wollumbin Horizons is the owner and have completely forgotten to mention anything about it being in liquidation and that all the assets of the company are being liquidated. So that is indeed very misleading information to potential investors. They have not clearly stated who the owner of it is even with the full knowledge that it was Wollumbin Horizons Proprietary Limited in liquidation. Now, I'm going to show you another thing. This is everything that was associated with what was sent to a prospective uh, investor in Nightcap on Mingimble. The date here replies 15th of September 2020. So there was this PDF this PDF, this PDF and a questionnaire and suggested viewing from AB which is pretty much you know watch Max Egan and these ones here are just basically word documents of the emails that they were attached to. Now, now this document here actually comes from NCV's website this is a PDF of their pricing. Now I want to draw your attention to the title of the document. It actually says NCV pricing valid till 29 Feb 2020. Now NCV, NCV Enterprises that has been selling the lots at Nightcap on Minjimbal has not purchased the property at 3222 until June in 2020. So before it actually even purchased the property it was selling interests in it. Now you could say that that is because NCV Enterprises holds the contract with Peter van Leishout and can thereby sell lots or shares because of the rest of the land that is encompassed that is Peter van Leishout's. That still hasn't been paid for as far as I'm aware by the Nightcap on Minjimbal members. They still have not purchased the land off him. It's one of those gunner promises that they keep putting off and the silly guy says yeah you've breached the terms of your contract but that's all right I'll give you an extension and then he turns around and goes oh, I'd like to get out of it but it's an ironclad contract. Oh you idiot. You know the second they can't make settlement that's it they're a goner. The contract's over. <laughs> that just goes to show you how much agreed is you know, flashing those, see these dollar signs? Peter Van Leishout is blinded by dollar signs. But here is NCV Enterprises selling shares in a development and 
promoting the fact that you can buy in to Nightcap on Minjimbal before they even purchase 3222, which is one of, well, that land alone by the number of dots on their map, let's have a look, is going to be the largest half of at least the development. Okay, so this is the whole nightcap on Minjimbal development. This area down here, sort of that comes across here, comes up and goes over, over here along that straight line in the dark green, and then down here, whoops, to there, that's 3222. The rest is Peter Van Leishout's land. And here you can see that this blue area here is the original area that Peter Van Leishout envisioned he would have the village. And it's even noted here that if you look here, that is actually the village centre. So the village centre that is currently being planned for Nightcap on Minjimbal, I yeah, I know that a lot of the attention has gone down to Mount Burrell commercial area and the shops that are going on there. But they've actually started to strip that area bare. The cabins have been removed from the caravan park. The leaseholders have been removed. There's no leaseholders paying any money to any profit holders that they actually said people would actually get income from the leases of the shop holders. Well, now they, they've got a member in there that they're having to pay a wage to. Well, I'm assuming Tony McMurtry is a member, you know, gifted by his brother for, you look after the shop and, you know, only ask a cheap wage. You, you can have a spot in the community. And he goes, yeah, bro, that sounds good. So the more you look at what they're actually doing and what they've actually got planned, the more you realise that perhaps you've been not looking at the most significant part of the plan, and that's this one in blue, where Peter Van Leishout originally envisioned his village centre. Now, as I showed you before, in that blue area is where he planned to put all the houses. Where all his black dots would be was in that little blue area. And the approval, if he had gone through with any of it, and it would have eventuated, would have only been for the three lots that come across here and down into here. So... That area there, he didn't even have houses put on there in his original concept. So this whole concept of Nightcap on Minjimbal, they have completely ignored the original concept, yet they are still claiming that existing approval exists. When that existing approval, if it did exist, would only be for the blue area here and this sort of land around here. Not all of this, that they are pinning this lapsed DA approval on, saying it's existing, and then opening it up to cover everything else. I mean, I don't know how they can actually come up with this concept. I suppose it's the same way that Mark McMurtry can come up with his concepts that he does on sovereignty and the crown and all that other stuff. But anyway, I'm digressing. There are two things that this map is also showing us. Well, this map is showing us a lot of things. Those pink areas where all the little black dots are in are pretty much existing roads that they have been put in for the forestry to access the pine plantations. They are dirt roads. Now, the first stage of the development, if they actually got approval now, would be to actually stick in sealed roads. This is the intent that they've said in a previous video 
where it's going to cost something like 28,000 uh, 28 million to actually put in just the roads nothing else just 28 million dollars worth of roads so that means that the cost of buying in is going to go up and up as every bill that they want to cover then increases the share of buying in but 28 million is still going to only get you roads and it's still not going to get you the approval it only puts you in a position to where now you can apply for approval to get all of those little black dots stuck on there and let people build but the concept that was just so small down here in blue the council said no six lots is too big we're going to make it smaller so now they've taken a, a, a DA that's lapsed that applied to a very small portion of the land and has blanketed across everything and said, well, approval's existing. It is not. It does not exist for Nightcap on Minjimble. Now, the reasons that it's not going to exist is, see all this blue here? That's a large part of it, isn't it? That's the water catchment area. Now, that water catchment area has also been taken into consideration by the boys at Nightcap because they want to stick dams in themselves to catch the water coming off the water catchment area. Which I don't know what it's like in New South Wales, but I'm pretty sure that, well, if you did something like that in a lot of places, you're going to find yourself in big trouble. You cannot go sticking in dams and blocking the flow of water sources or water catchments. But you're going to stick in your own dam and take half of the town's water supply because you just decided to stick one in there? Well, of course they will stick one in there because their concept is, as I found out through the videos, that AB says, right, we build the place, we stick in a, in a sewerage system, then we get in a, an independent certifier, and then we go to the council for approval. So in this case, it's a matter of they're going to do it and then see if it's okay after they've done it. Now, nobody knows what they're doing in the middle of all these thousands of acres. Where those bulldozers went, that... All this pink area down here now has actually been bulldozed. At Christmas time, they came in with a bulldozer and completely cleared the area right down to the river. And it's no wonder the council gave them two notices to stop what they were doing. See, this is their concept in their sovereignty and right and tribal mindset and everything like that where... You know, the laws don't apply in the matrix to them because they're apart from it. They make up their own rules. They do something and then worry about it if they get caught out. And that's the thing. They would be building dams. They would be using those bulldozers somewhere else. And the only thing I could hope for is that Google Earth are going to do a fresh satellite image so we can just see how much more damage has been done. Because, you know, they, they did so much in so few a days when they'd already done enough damage to the land, but no, that's not enough. We're just going to bulldoze the whole lot. And that whole lot that because we've been focusing around 3222, and the Mount Burrell commercial area here, that it is probably the assumption of a lot of people to think that that area is where they're putting the community centre and doing everything that they want to. No, this blue bit up here is the area that they intend to use. Because there's, one, there's quite a few drawbacks of this development. One of them is that 
there's only a couple of places where you can actually get power. Other than that, all those little dots are going to have to figure it out for themselves. <laughs> and you know what? Solar panels, you're going to have to get a lot of them. I don't think you're going to even have enough roof space to have enough solar panels out to be able to gather enough for yourself. Which is why these uh, little ones here in yellow with the star in the middle are planned to be community centres. Where I dare say they'd have a camp kitchen, toilet, shower and other basic facilities that pretty much, you know, you're not going to be able to create for yourself unless you drive in a mobile home and park it. And even then you're still going to have the issues of water and showers and, well, you can still shower, but there are lots of things to consider that the electricity, I'm assuming, is within this area. I don't exactly know when they say that they've got the community shed already and that's got three-phase power. Just exactly where is that? I don't know. They don't actually specify. It might. They might be talking about that along here, there's a shed just down from the main house on 3222, that might have three-phase power in it. I don't know. But one way or the other, your power is not going much further past a certain level along here. All these ones back here, forget it. I know that people that have planned to put in power in other places uh, back years ago, it used to cost oh, 10000 just to go, you know, so many hundreds of feet or metres or whatever. Uh, it was an exorbitant cost just to get electricity. And so, but I mean, this is meant to be off grid, isn't it? Where you don't, you've got to have your solar panels taking up everything everywhere because you've just got to have it to run all the, the appliances that you're not going to give up. And, you know, most people that are actually going to attempt this, uh, it, it's probably their first attempt. <laughs> Because anyone else that has done it before is actually going to go, no, I can see too many problems not been there, done that. And I'm digressing again. Now just back on to the sale of the orange bed in June 2020. NCV Enterprises purchased that orange bed for $2 million dollars in June 2020. And in June 2020, Adrian Brannock and Mark McMurtry did a video outside of the orange bit, <laughs> 3222, and said, we reacquired it, we bought it back. And that in itself is an admission of phoenixing back the asset that he just sold through the liquidator in the name of Wollumbin Horizons. Adrian Brennock is pulling down the sign saying we reacquired it back and Wollumbin Horizons was solely Adrian Brennock and he's an undischarged bankrupt too. So he's made the clear statement and admitted that they phoenix back the asset. And I'm not going to say illegally phoenix because a phoenixing manoeuvre is illegal. It doesn't need to be stated it's illegal because there's no legal phoenixing. So you, there's no need to distinguish legal from illegal. Now let's have a little bit of a closer look at the fact that they've stripped away assets from the Mount Burrell commercial. They've taken away the cabins at the caravan park and they've virtually deprived the caravan park of its ability to, to bring in an income. They've deprived all the shops of paying leaseholders so there's no income there. So why are they stripping it bare? And I think the assumption is that they intend to set everything up there and to modify it there, but 
down here, opposite the New Melbourne Springs development, is where I think they intend to set up their village hub, their community interface. Where, as they say it, they want their pub, their well, their sacred geometry pub, their sacred geometry healing centre, which they'll probably need it after they've been to the pub, and. When they talk about the service station and the general store, those assets will probably stay in place. But other assets like the pub, the medical centre and oh, the caravan park, that's it, will probably be moved. Now, I don't know how they would zone that area for putting in a caravan park but it also is a logical place to actually set one up now and please someone correct me if I'm wrong this little bit area over here is the Mebbin Springs development number nine and for all the years that I went past it and it didn't seem to do anything it's taken them a good five years to get through the stage one part of the approval to then get it to the stage where they can now sell lots for their actual plan. Not the concept, but the actual plan and houses going in. People can now submit their own applications to build. And it would make sense that you would perhaps even consider moving the whole businesses, even the shop and the servo, to an area that is very easily and readily accessible to a larger population that, well, there's only one way in, in and out of there, of Mebbin Springs, and that's right over the road from where Peter Van Leishout planned to put it all. And it is still, let's get on to another one that shows that, oops, we'll go back. Oh, good. I don't have it in this folder. Great. <laughs> oh, no. There we go. That area there. So let me just make that a little bit bigger. There's the Mebbin Springs. And this is the village centre. So there's a lot of activity that they've got planning for there. And with all the houses that they've got all lined up along here, just like in suburbia, that's not going to be anywhere near the village centre. That's going to be like a back street in suburbia with the houses. And because it's all been bared up, there's not even any bushes on there. No trees. It's just dirt. And they've got all these house lots lined up to go in there. But you know what? At least they don't have to clear an acre because it's already cleared. But so much for your beautiful bush, do no harm, and where's your privacy? <laughs> there is none. You're going to have to stick up a fence. Or you know what? You might actually be better off to go down the road and buy into Mebbin Springs, where you can actually get more privacy, <laughs> and there's no covenant that they've got, no set of bylaws and rules that you've got to build under that you don't have to agree to the mindset of the people selling you the place. You know, there's not all these restrictions. And you've got, um, well, I'm assuming they've got power and sewerage already plugged in. Or if they haven't, you know, like the Talex systems or whatever to, the, to handle the waste. Now, I notice that they've actually got roads marked on here, at least I'm assuming they're roads, because um, their network of roads is crucial to the ability to, to cope with fire dangers and the fire hazards. This is another thing of the area that it is rated as a high fire danger for bushfires. And even me, I mean, I'm no fire expert, but I just... Um, Imagine that with all the houses, hang on, I'll take you back to the better picture. All right, you'll have to imagine that if there is a bushfire heading 
towards this area from whichever direction it's coming in, that it's going to push people over this way towards the river where they can escape. Now, if you haven't lived in country where, you know, you look at a road and you say, oh, it's only 10k, but that 10k is a goat track, it's narrow, it's up and down hills, it's got blind corners, you've got to be so careful and your speeds are so slow and it's slow driving and, you know, you actually got to watch out for a bit of old wildlife that might decide to just wander out and sometimes that wildlife can be human too. So that's a, I suppose, a pretty, well, basic summary of the land, but not very much an explanation of how it all came to be one development. Now, when Peter Van Lyshout in 2009 got his approval, there were, he only got approval for that small area. But all this other land was still his up around here. That was all his. But down here at 3222, which sort of comes across here and goes up and down and like that, that was completely separate and belonged to somebody else. That person died and it became a deceased estate. In 2014-15, that's when Andrew Cody looked at buying it, couldn't, bought in Mark Darwin, and then Buller Buller was set up. And it was set up through a various number of, like, to talk about how they set up and purchased the land, I could talk about Organamazing, uh, Global Awakening Foundations, um, uh, Wollumbin Dreamtime, because these were all names that came in, that they were companies that were set up to accommodate the purchase of it. It didn't succeed, so what they did was then, well, they can't use those things again, they use different members, companies, names to acquire it through. And that's where Adrian Brennock apparently did what he did. But up until that point, they're still separate from Peter Van Lyshout. Peter Van Lyshout has, his DA has lapsed, and he couldn't do anything with the approval that he had oh, he'd fought so hard to get. But then he found out about this other thing going on over here at Buller Buller. So Peter Van Lyshout approached them at Buller Buller. And this is where I suppose you could say they had a bit of a marriage. A marriage that has not worked out very well for them, well, especially Peter Van Lyshout anyway. Because, you know, his partner isn't delivering up what he's supposed to. Now, the contract that was made to bring the whole development in so that it could be used by the members of Nightcap on Minjimbal to expand out all into Peter Van Lyshout's land. And it is still Peter Van Lyshout's land. As far as I'm aware that the contract to actually purchase that land into the Nightcap community has not actually taken place. That settlement of that contract keeps getting deferred and Peter Van Lyshout keeps allowing that to happen. You don't have to allow that to happen. Especially if the terms of the contract are clear on settlement date. It is never mandatory to give an extension past a settlement date. If the agreement cannot be fulfilled by payment in full, that is actually a breach of the contract. Now in one final little bit that I'm going to add on, this purple bit up here that Peter Van Lyshout jointly owns with Darko Kovac and Dolph Cook. It's somewhere up in this area here that the Cannabis in Industries Australia is. That's also a member company, a company that is run by Philip Dixon, Mark Darwin, uh, Adrian Brannock and Dolph Cook. Now, of course, when Adrian Brannock 
became a bankrupt after he'd moved Nyepi, the company, into his wife's name. He then put the sh his shares in Cannabis Industries Australia into Nyepi. That's just one of the shares that Nyepi holds in companies that uh, Adrian Brannock was able to conceal from his bankruptcy discovery. Well, it seems not forever, though. Now, it's also up in that area, too, where he's been doing his biochar. It's also an area on, um, well, especially sort of down, looks like down through here in comparison in this sort of area, where it's nearly as dead looking as what's over here at, at um, Bulla Bulla. I'm going to call it Bulla Bulla because they have. There's Bulla Bulla there. So that's the land of Nightcap on Minjimbal. And to this point, there is still the distinction between. I suppose you could say the Nightcap on Minjimbal members because Peter Van Leishout is not a member of Nightcap on Minjimbal. He's trying to sell his land through contract to them. And under the terms of those contracts, he is allowed the use of his land. Now, he's abiding by the terms and conditions he said that they could use. It's about time he started upholding them. You know, that what are they going to do? Build the whole damn development and they still haven't paid for the land? You know, that's 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 kind of squatting, you know, in a really weird way. Actually just uh as I'm finishing up here I just had a thought of what A B Adrian Brannock said about the Sphinx Rock Cafe that Mark Darwin said he called it the Sphinxinator. And, you know, he treated it like a joke. Like, you know, that's where all the... <laughs> well, as Mark McMurtry said in a video, where all the brain-dead hillbillies that can't see over the next hill go. And, uh, you know, that there's a lot of contradictions that go on with the people at Nightcap on Minjimbal. And that's a subject for other videos, isn't it? <laughs> that's the land. I hope I've done a good enough job of explaining it and explaining who actually owns it. Because right now, these orange bits now are owned by NCV Enterprises, which is, oh, oh it says Zilman nominees, um, Nyepi, and Just Holdings. Winner Super. Oh, there's one more. I can't think of it. Hey, there's lots of names, lots of companies. <laughs> Do them well to remember that. Uh, but Zilman Norman. Oh, that's right. The other shares were Derek and Michelle Zilman. That's right. Because first it was Zilman nominees, who's Derek Zilman and Michelle Zilman. Then you've got Derek and Michelle Zilman. And then you've got Nyepi, who is Adrian Brannock through his wife. And then you've got uh, smaller shareholdings that don't add up in the 1,093 shares that have been distributed, apparently, but only supposedly should be 1,091. So it looks like their correction didn't correct it, but make it even worse. But anyway, that's the land of Nightcap on Minjimbal. As clear as mud, I hope. <laughs> okay, I'll catch you next time. Bye.